Okay, so uh, test here's an example test one. Test one will be different, uh, but maybe similar. Some of the topics we'll look at today will be on test one, but this is not comprehensive. Um, just because it doesn't show up today, it still could show up on the test. Anything could show up on the test. This will be a good refresher to kind of remind you of some things, uh, some topics. So test um, for problem number one will be a 2D, a particle equilibrium. When we say particle equilibrium, we're saying that, okay, may, even if it's not exactly a point, we're going to assume that it's a point. All the forces act straight through the points. The main thing, there are no moments for my particle equilibrium problems. Um, but, you know, maybe we're drawing a free body diagram. There might, there aren't any in here, but there might be some springs, right? Force in a spring, K delta X. Um, <clears throat> there, you know, but we're, we're, let's look at this problem right here. We've got these three forces, and if the magnitude of the resultant force acting on the eyeball is 600 newtons and its direction is measured clockwise from positive X axis is 30 degrees, determine the magnitude of F1 and the angle Phi. So, um, in general, we'll have two equations, right? We can sum the forces in the X, and we can sum the forces in the Y. So, in general, we're, we're kind of looking for two unknowns. In this case, these are our two unknowns, F1 and the angle Phi. Sometimes, maybe all the forces are given, and you're just asked for the resultant. All right, so there's one type of problem. You're given all the forces, and you're asked, what's the resultant of these three forces, four forces? Maybe a problem like this where here are the forces and here are the, is the resultant. The resultant is 600 at some angle. But then another one is if it's in equilibrium, then it, then it might just show you all the forces and say that they are equal to zero. <clears throat> but this one is one where it tells you the resultant of the three forces is 600 at 30 degrees. What is F1 in this angle? Phi. Okay, so uh, sometimes you might just feel comfortable and might want to jump for straight to summing the forces in X and summing the forces in Y. And in this case, if we sum the forces in X, let me kind of look at this. Uh, the resultant, the resultant is going to be 600 newtons and at 30 degrees. Uh, so the resultant of these would be 600 sine 30, which would be 300, and 600 cosine 30, which is 519.62. All right, but anyway, so you might just want to jump to sum of the forces and set them equal to zero if, if this is an equilibrium, or set them equal to the resultant, which in this case would be 519.62 in the x, and down 300 in the y. All right. Um, so, and that's, that might be what I would do. I, I would kind of jump ahead into some of the forces in X, some of the forces in Y. Um, but you might want to go ahead and draw and just break each force into their components. Because that's what we're going to do here. We're going to break that force into its X and Y component. All right, so let me just look at these forces. Before I get to my equations, let me look at these forces. Uh, this would be, I don't know F1, and I don't know the angle, but it would be F1 sine phi. Uh, this would be F1 cosine, right? Cosine because it's adjacent, sine because it's opposite. Let me look at this one right here. Uh, this would be 500. This component would be sine 60, 500 cosine 60. I might would even go ahead and um, give us some values for these. 433.01. And then let's do this one right here. This one would be 450, the 3 fifths component, and 450, the 4 fifths component. You, you could give those values as well. So, so that, that's one option is slowing down, looking at each of those forces, breaking them into their components, and now we're ready to look at only the X components. All right, so only the X components would be F1, Cosine phi plus 250, right? That component, the, the 500 cosine 60, and then minus 450, 
the three fifths um, would be two seventy, right? And set those equal to five nineteen point six two. So there's one equation right there. Uh, if that one equation only has one unknown, go ahead and solve for it. Uh, but if it has two unknowns, then jump to our next equation. Next equation would be f one sine of v uh, up. And then in the y direction, now down for 33.01. And then down, let's see, the four-fifths component of 450 would be 360. And then th that would equal my resultant. And my resultant, uh, because it was 600 and down at 30 degrees, I knew it was 519.62 in the x and negative 300 in the y. All right, so then you've got two equations, two unknowns, a solve for it, uh, however you need to. Um, let, you know, any numbers, let's just put together. F1 cosine phi, let's see, that would equal 539.62. F1 sine would equal, right, add those two other over positive 493.01. And then write one in terms of the other. If you see, generally I like to write... Maybe F1 is 539.62 over cosine, and plug that in right here for F1. I'll do the math with you here. 539.62 over cosine phi times sine phi equals 493.01. Uh, you know that sine over cosine is tangent, so tangent would be 493. 0.01 over 539.62. Plug that in your cap. 493.01 over 539.62, and then inverse tangent, right? Second tangent uh, to get an angle of phi of 42.4 degrees, and then plug this back in right there, or in right there, or both. Just double check your answer. Make sure you can get F1. 731 newtons. So that's your answer. That's, that's what it was looking for. But look at all the other problems in the book, in this section, to kind of get a feel for what types of particle equilibrium problems. Either, hey, here are lots of forces. What is the resultant? Or the one that I just did, here are some forces. And the this is the resultant. The resultant is 600 at 30 degrees. Um, and solve for two unknowns. Or here's the situation right here. It is in equilibrium, so set that equal to zero. The reason why this one wasn't in equilibrium, or it is in equilibrium, it didn't really tell us the force right here. Something is happening right here. And if you really think about it, what's happening right here is the 600 um, at 30 degrees right here. Uh, but this one just showed you some forces and said, hey, the resultant of these three forces is this uh, solve for two unknowns. So in general, x and y axes, some of the forces in x, and some of the forces in y. All right.